everybody and welcome to what is uh, the, my first, very first, uh, can you get a very first? Anyway, first, Twantastic Guide. And um, this is a, a guitar guide. And um, the reason why I'm doing this really is sort of inspired by uh, quite a few messages I've had over the last year or two. Um, from people who uh, are either thinking of getting an electric guitar or have just got one and really don't know what to do after that. Um, so this is for you and anybody else who's interested. Uh, it, for advanced players and uh, guitarists of a certain uh, level, it's probably not what you want to be listening to right now. There must be more interesting stuff on YouTube. But this is for the people who... Um, uh, are interested in, in really starting off and discovering the magic of playing uh, uh, guitar and making music for themselves. I mean, it's, it's good for the brain, it's good for the soul, it's good for the heart. Uh, it's a good way of meeting people, actually, as well. Uh, so it ticks lots of boxes. So I'm hoping that this little guide may help uh, uh, push you uh, towards those wonderful highs that you can get. Um, so... If you uh, have a guitar or you, when you get an electric guitar, and I'm talking electric here rather than acoustic, um, the first thing I would do, obviously you can get it out of the box and admire it and all this sort of stuff, um, but I wouldn't, don't, I, I would personally get it taken to a guitar shop uh, or a guitar guru and get them to set it and make sure it's set up properly. You know, guitars are mass produced and yes, they arrive in pretty good, pretty good order, really. Uh, but maybe not perfect. You know, the, the string height of the fretboard may may not be perfect. And if you can get a, the strings to be a little bit nearer to the fretboard, these little things could help, particularly a beginner, but anyone really, uh, but particularly a beginner, get to grips with the guitar, you know, without having to get downhearted because the you know you can't press on the string properly and all that so i'd get get the guitar set up properly that's all you have to tell the guitar shop they'll know what to do uh current prices in 2022 by the way it's a weird day today it's the 22 of the two of the 2022 20, <laughs> is it a palogram i'm not too sure anyway it's a jolly excited day so take that down to um uh, a guitar shop. It's about 30, 40 quid in today's money. That's what I was going to tell you. Um, the other thing that you really should do is uh, hopefully they'll change. They, well, they might change the strings. I would I would recommend that they change the strings and uh, also to give you, sell you a, a spare set, same, same set. Um, you can get different weighted, different gauge strings um, from very light ones to uh, quite heavy ones. And... Um, I, I would recommend for a beginner, uh, perhaps not to go for the really, really light ones, because although they are a little bit, little bit lighter on the fingers to press down on the frets, they're actually easier to break as well. So I tend to go for uh, Ernie Ball regular slinkies, 10s, which is one step above. But I certainly wouldn't go for heavy strings because they're a devil of a job as a beginner, particularly, uh, you know, to press down on. The, the the manufacture of the strings and the type of strings um, is a bit of a personal thing with the guitarist, but it does have an impact too on um, on the sound you create and what you can do on the guitar. Um, but I, I would go for a fair, fairly light, not ultra light string, 10 I would go for. Just say, just say that, Ernie Ball regular slinkies or something like that. I'm not on a backhander, by the way, from Ernie Ball. Wish I was, but... Uh, they're the ones I've been using for donkey's years and they seem to work quite well. Uh, get yourself a tuner. Um, this is another really important thing, just to give yourself a, the best chance possible to, to, to get to grips with the guitar and to find out uh, how, you, how you're doing with it. Because if you're playing around with the guitar and uh, it sounded rubbish, it might be because you haven't quite got the hang of the notes. But it is possible too that it could be that your guitar's out of tune, and it would be a, a real, uh, really sad actually if you you became um, downhearted by the sound of your guitar, not because of your playing. You might think it's your playing, but because the guitar's out of tune, and they can go out of tune. You know, temperatures of the room and playing and the odd knock. Um, so I'd definitely invest in one of those. 
if you don't go for a foot pedal one, and again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend you did that first of all. I'll just go for a simple one. You put the end of the, uh, it clips onto the end of the neck, switch it on, and then you play a string, and it tells you whether you're sharp or flat. It doesn't take much to get the hang of it, really. And I, I would, when you're going through exercises, I would double check that quite regularly, actually, for starters, just so you know that if it sounds bad, if your guitar doesn't sound too good, it's not because, you know, it's out of tune. It's more likely because you're, you're doing something wrong, which is fine. Um, electric guitar, you could have a little amp uh, on a speaker, a little practice amp. They're pretty cheap. And some of these, uh, um, or a lot of these these days, have built-in effects. But quite frankly, um, I wouldn't get too stressed about that either. You know, the key thing is, and I'll run through this in a little bit more detail as I go on. You know, it's all, it's all about muscle memory, really. Getting the feel of the guitar, hearing, getting used to the sound of certain chords. You know, it's the shapes and it's the sounds. You start associating the, them all, really. And uh, But it's the muscle memory. So you don't really uh, need too many uh, accessories at the start. Plus, of course, if you, if you do find that you, you're not particularly enjoying it, you want a floggy guitar, then you've got a speaker and foot pedals to get rid of. So I, would, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, electric guitars with that being plugged in, yeah, they're very quiet. Uh, but that that may benefit the neighbours and the rest of your household, let's face it. Um, <laughs> and if you do make a mistake, not everybody knows. Um, but I mean, I don't even hear that on there, but I mean, you can certainly hear it and you can tell whether you've hit clean notes and stuff like that. And that's something that I'll, I'll run through in a minute. Um, so basically, you've had your car, guitar set up, you've got a nice little tuner there for about £5, £10, I don't know what they cost these days, and you've got plectrums. Just choose, I, I would splash out on about three or four, blah, 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 three or four plectrums. They're different size, different weights, again, different flexibility. Um, so I, I would actually go for about three or four different weighted ones. When you're taking your guitar into the guitar shop, ask for these. They're not expensive. I go for a very light one here. It's a uh, Dunlop 0.38 mil. So there's a lot of flexibility. I like that. Uh, the fact is I hold it up the wrong way, which uh, probably not many guitarists do, uh, but it's, it's what you're used to. And I think if, in terms of the plectrum, um, I think for starters, just go with the one that you feel most happy with. It's not the crucial bit at this point. It's down the other end of the neck with your fretful positions uh, that really count. So anyway, get get yourself uh, one or two plectrums. <coughs> but I can, I can personally, again, only because I've been using this this one, well, not actually this one. I have been buying other ones, but this, this type of guitar uh, plectrum I've been using for about the last 40 years. That old, I hear you say? Yes, I'm afraid so. Uh, so you're ready to roll then. I think the next step then would be to get a guitar chord book or go online and don't be phased by all the different guitar chords there are. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, I suppose thousands, I don't know. You know, you've got your sevenths, you've got your diminished this, you've got your ninths, you've got your minors, you've got your majors, you've got... Um, major seven plus five and oh there's a whole range but i think for the for starting off i would just go for three chords uh some guitarists i'm sure would recommend uh, a different three to the three i'm recommending uh, but i think also quite a few guitarists will probably go along with my my take on this one anyway i would go for a major d major and an E major. Those three chords, a lot of early rock and roll and pop, and in fact, even more recent uh, rock and roll and pop and stuff like that, um, is based around a three chord pattern. Blues, definitely, uh, because that's a 12 bar blues. That That's essentially, you might have the other chord thrown in, but essentially that's a three chorder as well. The Ramones, one of my favourite punk bands of the 70s, uh, 
they, they were pretty hot on the three chords. Status quo, three chords. Buddy, you know, it, it it's very, very common. So you get the, uh, I don't know, that thing I was playing right at the start there. That's three chords, that's A, D and E. Um, you can throw in a few extra ones, but we'll worry about that another time. Um, the reason why I say the A and the E in particular is that, again, it would be easy once you've mastered those, hopefully, to then consider moving on to a way in which you can very easily capitalise on that and build up your chord repertoire pretty quickly, simply by um, barring uh, the fret. So if just briefly, we won't run through this, and please don't try this. Please don't try this one at home. Uh, certainly not yet anyway uh, but basically why i'm saying e for example you've got e here and then i can make that into an f very easily by going then f sharp g g sharp a it's very easy you wouldn't be able to do that so easily with other chords so that's why i'm saying e and a should be two of the three chords that you're learning so the the key thing here really is to make sure it's your guitar's in tune all the time and just keep running through these chords yes it's going to be boring but it shouldn't you know in some respects it shouldn't be boring because your end game is to get nice clean sounds if you can get nice clean sounds then you can move on to other chords you may want to try some other chords see if there's any easier ones but there's no hiding really that at some stage in the not too distant future really if you want to progress you're going to have to master these these three chords so I, I would really stick with it if I were you um you you could be playing some of the notes and it's going to sound like this that's very very common very very common for absolute beginners and actually non-beginners too um and the reason why you may get duff sounds like that is either because you've been stupid like me or it could be that you're not um, pressing down on the string uh, enough so it's not actually making the strings not making contact with the fret so I'm, I've, I'm just resting my finger here on one of the strings but if I press down I'll say you press down you get the note so the key thing is the string needs to be down in the fret, not on not on the metal bit, but actually in the in the in the gaps there. And the if you get a duff sound, it's either because of that, <coughs> or it's because um, you're, you're gathering your fingers pretty tightly together. It's possible that um, your finger, the correct fingers, holding down the correct string, but another finger is blocking the sound so basically you need to go through the chords like this one for a for example you can strum it but also go through each note and if it's clean give yourself a pat on the back have a drink and then come back and work on another chord and then importantly then come back to that chord again and see if you can still nail it. And it is it is repetition, muscle memory. And uh, over time, you'll become fluid on that to the point where really I, I would recommend your, your goal should be able to, to, to finger these chords without even looking, looking down at your fretboard. Now the strumming, um, for starters, um, just to give yourself a bit of a um, a bit of a challenge, I suppose, really, and, and I suppose to see how it all fits in. Because uh, at the end of the day, if you're going to be playing tunes either uh, solo or with backing tracks or with a band, you're going to need some kind of rhythm going. So I would set a very slow. I would strum up. There's various ways to strum, and again, that's probably another lesson. Really, you know, you get strummers and you get rhythm players. Rhythm players are much more refined and much more versatile. A strummer, uh, no disrespect, but but that's what we'll do now. So a strum is basically down, up, down, up. So.
And this is the key thing, really, when you're learning the chords, to get as much fluidity. Well, that's a long word, isn't it? Um, as much fluidity in as you can. So instead of like this. You really want it to be. So no pauses between the, the changes. That takes time. Don't Please don't get impatient. Don't start blaming the neighbours, the cat. Um, your fingers are too short, too stubby, too long, too short, whatever. Um, you need to stick in it because you can do it. Trust me, you can do it. It just means a lot of time. But by goodness me, I think uh, every... every um, year, month, week, day, hour spent on the guitar, um, you're slogging over this sort of thing. It pays off. It pays off. Believe in yourself and believe that you can do it. And I, I promise you will be able to do it. So you can run through. I would do the up, down, up, down thing. You can do various other rhythms and you can do arpeggios and all this or, or on the A. But for the time being, I would just go... This is an absolutely critical thing. You could even make up some songs of your own. How about that? Or you could have some very uh, uh, tasty lyrics, couldn't you? You could make it a nice, sexy, smoochy kind of thing. Or you could have a bit of a punk aggression and stuff like that. But you could do, you know, again, just make up a couple of verses and a chorus or something like that. Um, there are various ways to ultimately... Uh, work out tunes and that's obviously if you read musical score uh that that's obviously helps considerably although interestingly i've come um no disrespect i mean i can't do score i wish i could uh but i i have to say i have come across some musicians uh in the past who can read score and think oh, wow you know these can be good and in terms of their uh, ear and um, creativity, uh, I have to say, the, the people I came across, two of them anyway, uh, were useless. They just needed the dots. That's all they could work on. So I would suggest train your ear too. I can, if anyone's interested at some stage, I could do another twaintastic guide on, on some, some ideas in which you can train your ear. Because if you can pick up tunes with your ear and, and play along to them, then I think that's a great bonus, especially if you are moving into a group scenario as well. You'd be able to fit into a group uh, so much easier, really. And it opens up lots of um, avenues too, because you don't need the score. You can use guitar tabs as well, but some of those together with chord listings on the web can be quite dodgy. You wouldn't rely on those uh, uh, totally, to be honest. But that, that's all for another another time. Once you've uh, developed on the chord front and got to grips with these very basic things, we could develop the chords a bit and maybe work through some scales, major scale, minor scale, uh, blues, major and minor pentatonic, stuff like that. Um, that pretty straightforward, to be honest. Um, I don't know much more than that, uh, but I could run through those if required one day. But for the time being, just to recap, um, get your guitar set up, get um, get your plectrum sorted, get a tuner and then just work at these chords, work at these chords and um, hey, you'll be rocking pretty soon, I reckon. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, it's hardly technical. I know that. Forgive me, but I'm not that kind of guy. But hopefully a bit of the information I've um, shared with you today might just... Um, uh, inspire you to pick up that guitar and uh, crack on with it. All the best. Keep in touch. Bye.